In this video, I'm going to show you how to perform a paired sample t-test through the 95% confidence interval approach, where you estimate the 95% confidence intervals associated with mean differences. And if those lower and or upper bound do not intersect with zero, that is the confidence intervals, then you can reject the null hypothesis that the mean difference scores is equal to zero. So here are the steps where I have to follow them. I'm just going to go through them much like I did in the textbook. So calculate the mean associated with the difference scores. So here are the scores, GPA pre and GPA post. Now I've already calculated the difference scores when I calculated the standard error associated with the difference scores. So I'm just going to do this again so that we can carry through the steps from beginning to end. But I'm going to go through this part fairly quickly because you've already seen me do this sort of thing. So go into equal A2 minus B2 and we're getting different scores between the paired observations subtracting A scores to B scores and I need to calculate the mean associated with the different scores and the way I can do that is I can go mean diff equals and I can go A equals average C2 to C46 because that's where the last value is in the column. So down all the way to C46 because there are 45 paired observations in this analysis. So that's the mean of the difference scores, but it also equals the difference between the GPA and GPA uh, pre and post means. So if I calculated mean 1 as the average of a, whoops, A2 to A46, I get a mean of 2.25, and then mean 2 equal average B2 to B46, and I calculate the difference between these two values, I'll get exactly the same as the mean of the difference scores that I calculated early. 2.25 minus 2.909 gives me negative 0.659, which is exactly equal to the average of the difference scores. So that's actually a connection there. And so why this is actually relevant to the test of the difference between two related means is the same thing as testing the hypothesis that the mean of the difference scores is equal to zero. Those are the same types of null hypotheses. So the next step is to calculate the standard error associated with the mean difference scores and I instructed you in a previous video that we need to calculate the standard deviation associated with the deviation score. So STD diff, and I can calculate that pretty simply with the standard deviation, STDEV, and from C2 to C46, that's the standard deviation. Now the sample size, the paired number of paired observations is 40 five and I need to calculate the standard error of the difference scores so SE diff is equal to the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Now again I'm going through this quickly because we already covered the calculation of the standard error of the difference scores. So let's go equals standard deviation of the difference scores so F6 divided by the square root of n, f7, and I get 0.158, which is equal to the standard error of the different scores, but you also can view it as the standard error of the difference between two related means. Now I'm going to cover that later on in another video, because in this one, what I'm particularly interested in is applying this technique to the estimation of 95% confidence intervals for the mean difference scores. So calculate the degrees of freedom, and that's pretty easily done. So because the degrees of freedom are equal to n minus 1, so it's paired observations. So equal f7 minus 1 gives me 44 degrees of freedom. And I don't need any decimal places there. Now you'll notice that in the independent sample t-test, the degrees of freedom are equal to n minus 2. But in this case, because the degrees of freedom are relevant to different scores, there's really only one column of data that we need to have information from. And that's why the degrees of freedom are based on n minus 1, 
not n minus 2. So I've got a degrees of freedom of 44. Identify the t value from the t distribution with specified alpha and tf. Now we've done this before with the independent sample t-test and it's a very similar procedure. I need to identify the critical t value in the theoretical t distribution and then I'm going to make use of that information once I have it. So let's call that critical critical t as distinct from calculated t and what I need to use is the t dot inverse function and two tailed and I need to specify the probability and that's the alpha level that I'm wanting to specify and it's almost always 0 0.05 and that corresponds to 95 percent confidence so 1 minus 0 0.95 gives you 0 0.05 so confidence and alpha are kind of the opposite we want a certain level of confidence of making a good decision which is 95 percent and then we also have 5 percent as the maximum amount of error we're willing to tolerate and the degrees of freedom are 44 so we get a critical t value of 2.015. So now we need to carry on. Whoops, I've actually duplicated that step. So multiply the t value and the standard error of the mean. So that means multiply the critical t value and the standard error of the mean because that's going to give me the multiplier. So I need a multiplier and that is multiplying the critical t value and the standard error of the mean. I'm very nearly there. So equals multiply the standard error. So SE diff F8 multiplied by the critical T value F10. And that gives me a multiplier of 0.318731. So now that I've got the multiplier, I can follow the last step of the uh, process, which is to add and subtract the product from step 5 to and from the result from step 2. So that is basically getting the lower bound and upper bound 95% confidence intervals. So let's do the first one. Let's add to the mean difference F5 plus the multiplier F11 and we get negative 0.34 so that is the 95% upper bound just upper UB for upper bound and now I need to do the opposite I need to subtract the multiplier I call it a multiplier because really it's a it's a product I sh really should call it a product rather than a multiplier basically the same thing that's what I mean by that so now I need to subtract so let's go F5 minus F11 and I get negative 0.78 I'm gonna call that the lower bound 95% LB for the lower bound. Now the final step, if the 95% confidence intervals do not intersect with zero, reject the null hypothesis. And so because these two values are both negative, it implies that the mean difference or the mean of the difference scores is almost likely, you know, we would declare with a certain level of confidence that's respectable, 95% confident, that in the population there is a difference between not knowing how to set goals and knowing how to set goals when it comes to performance in university as estimated by GPA. So those are the steps you can follow to calculate all these uh, calculations. Again, we don't do this by hand anymore, by hand through Excel, because we can do these sorts of calculations very rapidly in a program like SPSS. But I do think it gives you some insight into the nature of standard error and also how it's relevant to the calculation of the paired sample t-test. And I also think that it helps you appreciate the meaning of 95% confidence intervals and how they're useful and how they can be used to test a null hypothesis like the mean difference scores are equal to zero. We've rejected that null hypothesis with alpha 0.05. We would say P less than 0.05, this mean difference is not equal to zero.